Guys, I'm excited that you're here to watch the message today. The Horsepower Series is all about putting you in a different vehicle so that you can increase that horsepower. The old way of doing things will not work with where God is taking you. So I just wanted to tell you that, you know, humanity is searching for power. It's not gonna happen in the earthly system. We have to completely get out of that vehicle and into a new, more powerful vehicle, the kingdom of God. I'm going to show you how. Before you go, do me a favor, let's stay connected. Click the link right here, click the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff, and make sure that we are connected. I promise you, it's gonna change your life. All right, good morning, Gazelle Church. I hope you guys are excited to go into the Word of God. It is going to be a great day. How's everybody this morning? Make some noise in the house. Come on. Are you ready for the word? I hope you are. This is going to be a powerful day. We are going into our next part of our horsepower series. Everybody online, we want to welcome you. So glad you guys are all here. And um, as I mentioned last week, um, I do not miss church very often, but we are using technology to make sure that I'm here this is my final week of this, by the way, so I am going to physically be with you next week, but thank God we are able to use technology. Um, in fact, what happened um, in this past time for me going to Africa was I set my schedule to only miss one Sunday, and then I realized that I had committed, when they sent me the invitation, I committed to two Sundays, and I actually did try to get out of it. I tried to get out of this second one, but I, I couldn't get out of it. So I wanted to honor my, my commitment. But this is my very last one. But again, we're just going to use the screen to get the word across to you. But I will be back in the building forever. I mean, I don't foresee another day, not even using technology. I don't, I don't foresee uh, another day where I'm out for a long time. Uh, you may see me traveling, but I literally don't see that I, because I always make it back in time for church, generally speaking. But I wanted to say something to you today. Um, I really dread days like 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 these, um, in a sense, because a lot of times people are not mature enough to understand the full vision of a church. And even though I might miss five or six Sundays total in an entire year, um, really it's not many. If people if people are not able to come and still feed on whatever God has for them, that shows a sign, that's a, that's a sign of uh, immaturity in a way, because sometimes people get um, so caught up in who they're hearing the message from that they forget that there's a mission on this house, and there is a mission on this house. So whoever's in this pulpit, or if I'm doing it by video, I promise to never abuse that, that platform, and I promise to never make that the primary thing. In fact, this is the last time for a long time that I can foresee um, but anyway, thank you for allowing the church to move forward, staying strong in our commitments, in our serving, our praying, our giving. None of, that should, none of that should weaken because of the use of technology. And I only say that because a lot of churches, that is exactly what happens for some reason. Uh, pastors tell me all the time, you know, if they're not there physically, that people start scattering and stuff and stop giving. And so anyway, I'm glad that's not us. Don't let that be us ever, but I will physically be in front of you next week, and I'm excited about that. Amen. So let's get into this word today. It is going to be an amazing day. I do have a word for you, okay? Um, let's pray really quick. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful that we get to come before you, Lord, and that we get to dive into the word. We're grateful that you are giving us secrets, keys to your power to know who you are, to see you, and to see who we are in you. And God, today we thank you that we are literally transformed right here in your presence. God, I thank you that, that if anyone here today, Lord, is struggling with anything in their life, that you would be the great I am for them. Meet that need and supply that need um, by your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, receive that and say amen, amen, and amen. All right, so... Right out of the gate, I am going to... Now, this is going to be um, a lot of new stuff today. I will pad it uh, around with the concepts that we need to keep reviewing. But this is going to be another um, investment. It's, this is going to be another, just another step into finally understanding how does power work in the kingdom. We, now, we've been talking about moving our vehicle. So, instead of trying harder, right, in life... 
and, and striving to get things done, if you needed to come up with, uh, you know, a certain amount of money at a certain time, or if you needed to um, demonstrate something that, that you did not have natural means for, how would you do it? You'd have to be, you know, you'd have to have a different vehicle. That would change the game, right? So if you are trying to get to uh, Hawaii, by the time you get to the, you could go to the edge of land, wherever you wanted to go, the edge of the land in California or Mexico or wherever you wanted to jump from, okay, and head that way, eventually, uh, you, you, you're not going to be able to swim there. That's not, that's not strong enough. That vehicle won't do it. You're going to need a, a ship, but that's going to be slow. Or you're going to need an airplane, something with more power. But it's something that it's not even just the power part of it. It's about how it is designed. That airplane is crafted and designed to move you to a different place with ease. That's what you want. So I want to talk more about this idea of increasing power because we're trying things to increase the power. The power gives us possibilities, right? So if we have more power, we can do more. And, and really the, pow- the purpose of the power, write this down. The purpose of the power is to fulfill God's agenda on the earth. The purpose of power is not power. The purpose of power is to fulfill the agenda of God on the earth, to fulfill our callings to unfold and and manifest the kingdom of God on the earth so that heaven Jesus had prayed the kingdom would come on the earth um, just as it is in heaven he said but you're going to have to do this from something that he always talked about The, the kingdom of God is within you repent because the kingdom is here he said um that the kingdom of God is is the primary focus of his teaching it's like a net, it's like a seed, it's like a mustard seed, it's like this and that and the other. It is like, every, so he's always talking about this different mentality, okay? And the Bible is constantly trying to bring us back to what Adam lost. We lost, we didn't lose a religion, we didn't lose, um, you know, physical things. We literally lost our, our understanding and access, our legal access and understanding of all that God has given us. So, Let's get back into this and just understand more about how to unleash this power. The first thing I want to, I want to write down a phrase on the board. And I want you to, I want you to, I want to build this, the rest of this message around this concept, okay? The, the, what I want to write down on the board is, this is like um, a mixing, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'll call it like a, a business term or something, but if you've ever started a business or, or you know anything about business, they, they have this term they use for the resources necessary to begin the business called capital, all right? Uh, but I want to write some, I want to add something to that. So write this down. This is, I'm going to build something around this. Truth capital. How do you spell capital? Is it O-L or A-L? Y'all help me out. How do you spell capital? It's A-L, right? It sounds like O, but it's not. Praise the Lord. So y'all know I didn't win the spelling bee. Truth capital. Okay. All right. So I want to, as a matter of fact, let me write down, I'm going to write down the whole phrase. So truth capital, let's write it, let's write it out like this. Truth capital causes change. All right. Truth capital, this is what I want to focus on. Truth capital causes change. I'm going to come back to that in a second. But this is what I want us to understand. So oftentimes, we think that in terms of vision, our vision and intentions for life is going to be strong enough. Like, we always talk to people about being intentional and always talk to people about having a vision. Um, All of that is good. But vision and intention alone is not powerful. It's not powerful. Having, Having a vision is not powerful. Having intention is not really powerful. Because intentions alone does, don't do anything. I mean, a lot of people have intentions on doing something but never do them. We all had the intention. We all had a vision, right? But we never seen it come to pass and, because it's not powerful enough. And our vision and intention must have proper, write, us, write this all down together. Our intentions and visions for our lives, our businesses, our kids, whatever it is, our country, our, our visions and our intentions must have proper 
truth capital before anything happens. It must have proper truth capital before anything happens. I'm going to start breaking this down, okay? The events that we see happening in life, the events, the things that happen, what we call an event in our life, the events that manifest in our lives, they are created by truth capital. And truth capital is gained by what you give your attention to. So a vision and an intention must have the, uh, the proper amount of attention capital, but your attention capital has to be true. So let's go from truth to attention, because attention is the resource necessary to make this happen. And I'm also going to write seek down. I, I'm going to try to tie that together. So whatever we seek, whatever we focus on, whatever our attention is, 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 is concentrated on, that is the investment we are making in the vision or the intention until action starts to happen or until an event starts to change. So we need the intention capital. And attention, by the way, is not just with your eyes. Attention is also the idea of movement and activity towards something. Okay, so if you're giving something proper attention, maybe you give attention to your children, right? And it's not just you're watching them with your eyes, but you're, you're touching them, you're, you're hugging, you're, you're, you're taking them somewhere, you're playing ball. Like I'm, carrying, I'm putting their clothes on them, I'm bathing them, I'm feeding them, I'm, I'm giving care, attention. I'm giving care to this thing. So the amount of, of attention that we give them and the amount, of, uh, the amount that we seek or understand them is going to play a part into how they develop and how they change and, and what are the events that manifest in their life. And it works the same way with us. So whatever the visions are and the intentions are, they have to have proper attention. Not, I'm not just talking about time and things like that. I'm talking about truth capital. Your vision needs truth capital. Your, 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 um, your intentions need truth capital or no event. It will never manifest. You'll never see it. And, and, th and this is the issue because we think we are observing a world that is autonomous or operates by itself, governed by itself, and we don't realize that everything we see is functioning off of attention or truth capital. Now, truth is subjective to the world. What one man says is the truth is not necessarily what another one of us would say is the truth. So before we are going to make the right things happen and our attentions, uh, intentions come to pass, we have to make sure that we have truth, real truth, objective truth being put into these things. So in other words, unless you properly understand what is real, and what is true. You cannot invest the right amount of truth capital into a vision to make it manifest on earth as it really is in heaven. So why do we see, let's, let's see if I can tie these things together. So far, hopefully you understand what we're saying, okay? So when we're seeing things happening, it's not autonomous, uh, accidental victimization of people and things. It doesn't have power like that. The, the, um, the world does not operate that way, okay? Everything that we see as we've been covering is operating by something that you can't see. Now, if what you can't see, in the th which is going to be your understanding of something, your thoughts, your ideas, if that is the wrong information, you will spend all of your life investing into visions and intentions but never having the power to actually make it come to pass. This is why it's important what you seek. And Jesus gives us the secret, right, in Matthew 6, 31 through 33. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. Give God your attention. Why? Because that's where you pick up the capital needed to cause all things to be added to you. See, if you don't pick up real truth, you don't have the actual currency that is necessary to purchase the vision you are trying to see. And I'm using a bit of metaphors and things like that, but you get what I'm saying. So you want a different life, a better life, a dominant life. This is the life God gives us, but it is all, it, it, it's not free. 
You have to invest the right truth into that vision. And if you do it for long enough and you do it and you put enough into it, it by itself will manifest. Your job is to seek the truth and keep your your investment of attention with that truth consistent. Because here's the thing. Whatever you think you see, you, so let's say we're putting our attention on a vision, but our attention is always a concept. So if I'm looking at something, giving it my attention, I'm going to do it through my perception of what is right or wrong. So we all raise our kids different. We give them different attention. We all handle society different. We give it different attention. Your attention is a result of your perception. So if we don't change our perception of what is right or wrong first, and we don't perceive the kingdom, Jesus said, there's no way the power is going to go through that perception. Your attention to things will never be able to cause the things that you are trying to make change. It'll never cause it to change. What was the problem, Pastor Mike? My, my attention was on it, but my perception that I was using to give it attention was powerless. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm making myself happy right now. See, the more you seek first the kingdom of God, it changes the precepts by which you give something attention. Ugh. Lord, give me somebody who can handle this. Y'all, are y'all good? Can y'all handle this? Listen, all right. So, so my precepts, the things that I know, my consciousness, my, the precepts, the, the mental model paradigm of my life determines the type of attention I am giving the things in my life. And that's the question. Have, have your false precepts of what is in life caused you to give the wrong investment to things and people that has robbed you from having the experiences that you should have had, missing things that you should have had? And the answer to that is yes, because the first step is you have to fix your precepts so that your attention is giving proper care to your vision. The power of the proper precepts. Man, that's a good little flows right there. I'm, I'm sure that's going to end up on social media somewhere. The power of proper precepts gives me the ability to invest properly into my visions and intentions accurately so I can produce what it is that I am trying to produce. Whatever God has given me a vision for, whatever heaven is trying to push through my life, if I have proper uh, precepts, then I have the power to cause something to happen. Woo goodness gracious. Proper precepts. We're doing the wrong type of work. We run out in the world. We never change our precepts. We don't want anyone to touch it. Don't touch my understanding of what life is. We will fight each other tooth and nail, kill folks, and all the time running around in error the whole time. Killing people for stuff you don't even understand. Operating in error all the time. Your whole precept has got to change. Once you change that, you'll give a different type of care and attention to things, which will in turn cause new things or change to happen. Ooh, hallelujah. A new event. I'm going to use the word event for change. How about, how about instead of seeing the same scenery in life that you've been seeing the whole time, how about if you came to church every Sunday, and you know I love church, you got to get in here every single week. you got to study like crazy. you got to stay ahead of the devil. you got to know his games and his schemes. you got to know how he's lying to you. He's putting dark information in you, trying to make you ignorant of the kingdom of God, which when you start giving care to something, you make matters worse than they were before you started. Man, I'm only in my introduction. Hallelujah. So you're not observing an autonomous world and reality. You are actually watching the spiritual birthing and manufacturing of an immoral, of an immoral and undesirable world. Manifesting itself through humanity, how humanity sees and what we feel with our minds. It's not just happening to us, y'all. It's not just going on. We are manufacturing problems. We are creating the problems. Everything from the natural, uh, from, from, from nature in the world to our own personal depressions and, and marital problems and all of that type of stuff. We manufacture these things. They don't just happen. See, that's why you have to live 
from a truth. And there's only one world available that has truth. It is the original, and it's the one Jesus always discussed. It is God's kingdom. You have to start to approach things in this manner, and you can cause new events to happen. And that is what we're supposed to do. So write that down. Truth capital, invested before something happens. Let me keep going. The agreement or bond made when we seek something intensely or the bond made when we, when we in seek, it, seek something intensely enough. Like, okay, let's, so we seek the truth. We seek the kingdom. Now, if you seek it long enough, a bond is created. Mm. Because seeking is an intimate activity. When you're trying to get to know someone intimately, it's not a physical exchange. Like, that's what most people, men and women are very different in that. Right? When we're trying to get to know someone, the ultimate act of, and culmination of, of a relationship is to have children, family, and to be with one another in a sexual way. But... The ultimate intimacy is not in the physical activity because people have physical activities all the time, but they can't stay connected. But that's one place that they get bonded. But where is the actual bond? The actual bond is the exchange of information. So you know a person when they start giving you their information. That's the most intimate. It's more intimate than the physical one is the conversation you have with people about what's in their mind. What's in the mind of God? See, when, he, when, he's, when the Bible says um, that this bond is created, it always calls it knowing them. Adam and Eve, Adam knew his wife, right? Or Jesus said, I didn't know you, okay? He's talking about the, the intercoursing of the information. Physically, when you are with a person, there is, um, even in the, the activity, there is information exchanged physically. And this is what also creates part of a bond. But if you start to see it through the spiritual lens, the most intimate thing is when you seek something long enough or you stay in that activity long enough, something is born out of that. In the romantic sense, you have children. In the, in the spiritual sense, you have a new mindset or you have a new, new um, perception. You have new information. But you don't get good information or, or, or deep information until you have enough time seeking that person's information. Seeking them, giving them your attention and your care. And so when you do that, a bond is made and you get exposed to that that idea or the culture of that um, person or nation or whatever the case might be. And then it cultivates in our minds and a conditioning is happening. But what's actually going on is a hijacking of our authority. And so as a bond is made, Our authority is being hijacked. Whatever we bond to, whatever we give our power to, it is draining our power. So if we are seeking God, God is giving us power. He he said power flowed out of me when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of the garment. But when you do it with people on the earth, power doesn't flow out uh, of them into you. You They are draining your power because only God has The power that you need. So when people, when you are connecting on the natural sense and with with people, instead of seeking God first, this is where power is coming from. So they're taking your power and the world is using your power to to, uh, invest into their ideas. And we're back to truth capital. So they need your power to cause their events to happen. So... All of the things that they are predicting, all of the things that they are telling you is going to happen to you, all of their predictions of the, and forecast of the, you know, the earth and the stock markets and this and that and the other, how, how could that event happen? It won't just happen. It is not going to just happen. It only happens when we invest enough of our power into the lie. We have to give it our power. We have to give it our power. So... We possess the authority of change on the earth. And until it has our power, it can't do anything. But how is that bond created? It's created through those exchanges and relationships that we have with those things. And if you seek it long enough, if you pursue it long enough, if you give yourself to the world long enough, it'll have all of your power and produce events that you do not think are desirable. 
Change will be happening to you, not for you. Things will be happening. You'll become a victim of all the circumstances of the world. And what I'm saying to you today is, is that until we invest our own truth that God gives us into his visions for us and intentions, we'll keep getting these undesirable results. Let me keep going. So, in a sense, what, what we want to do is make more investments into God's ideas instead of the world's ideas. Think of the, think of the investments we are making if we're just talking about investments. I always, I always get a, like, when I think of the, the things that we pay people to do in the world and how, and how valuable it is, right? We invest into it to make sure we have it and that it's operating. And you think about things like movies and, and actors and sports. We invest so much money into entertainment. And not, we don't pursue, we, we invest money in material things or we, we, we um, invest money into experiences that have no value to you other than a few minutes of entertainment or a few kicks or a few thrills of going somewhere or being a part of something. And instead, we do not pursue right information and invest into that. We don't invest in information and we don't invest into the right people who possess the right information. And that would be a game changer for you. You're talking about increasing power. You have to invest into the truth. Invest into things that bring you truth. Invest into people that bring you truth. Instead of investing into watches and shoes and this and that and the other, where are your investments going and are they producing change the right way in your life? People got to think about this stuff. Everything you invest into, if you keep investing into it long enough, an event is going to happen out of that. Something, and it won't be desirable. It might be you going bankrupt. That might be the event. Physically bankrupt. Financially bankrupt. Emotionally bankrupt. How did you go bankrupt? You put out too much and didn't get anything in return. Ooh, I'm preaching up in here. See, when, the, when it's a one-way street, eventually you go bankrupt. You can't keep going to the ATM and withdraw, 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 and nobody's putting anything back. I'm, I'm teaching you a principle here of power. Everything that's powerful has a reciprocation effect to it. You have to make deposits, not just withdrawals. Most people that are around you are probably just around you because you provide something to them. And they're not necessarily giving back. We have to make more investments into things that are going to pour back into us. So God asked for our seeking. He says, seek first the kingdom because it adds everything back to you. In other words, everything God believes in, you should believe in. Don't give no energy to none of these movements out here. Don't give no energy or investments, in, not, not money, not time, not, not anything good to, pr to promote it. Don't give any investments to that. Don't give any investments to their ideas. Don't give any, but give investments to the house of God, to your time with God, to people who represent God to you, being in your groups, having friends like that, having relationships like that. You can invest time your money, your energy, everything into things that God himself is involved in. And I can promise you this. I've never met a person that invests into powerful things like that. They sow into it. They, they do not reap the same. See, the thing about God that I love is that whatever you sow, you reap. So I'm investing into God. I'm doing the work of God. I'm everything. I try, I'm trying to line up every investment into something that God has for me. So I go to God for truth. Why? Because I want to take the truth he gives me and keep reinvesting it, putting that truth capital back into the visions that he has for me. So I get the truth from him. I get the vision from him. And then I just take the truth and put it into the vision. I take the truth and put it into the vision. I don't take truth from everybody else because that can't make what God wants to happen for me happen. I hope you are following this. What God is trying to do is bring a kingdom manifesting into the earth. He cannot do that with the world's information. So you got to, first of all, get the capital from him, which is the truth. And then you put it into the vision. If you, if you need wellness in your body, you pull the truth. And you stay with God until you have that picture. So the more time you spend with God, guess what happens? He keeps loading you up with truth. And the truth of, your, of, of who you really are, your, your finances, your, your children, all the stuff that you know God has better for you. It feel, it's like watching a picture develop. 
The more you spend time in that word, the more you spend time in that truth, the more you stay exposed to the light, it starts to influence things. It changes how you operate. It changes who you hang out with. It changes what you eat and drink. It changes your everyday activity. It changes what you think is going to happen to you in the future. And it starts to, listen, what you think is real right now before you knew the truth the more you sit into the light of the truth, the kingdom of God starts to influence you in such a way where now the things that are unseen seem more real and ready to happen than the things that you currently see. Then you start saying, well, what I see, if it don't line up with what I know in the kingdom, then I know it's not true. And you start to bring change or a new event to happen in your life. But it has to take massive amounts of truth capital. And you will not see things shift until you have invested enough. That makes sense, right? It's like a, it's like a, it's like paying off a bill in a sense, I guess. You know, truth capital is. I want to pour truth into this thing that I need to see, this intention. And when is it going to happen? Because some people say, "Oh, Pastor Mike, I tried that. I tried that thing. You said it didn't work. I still had bad luck. So you haven't invested enough. Oh, you, oh, you want to do something big for God, right? Well, you're gonna need to invest more. Well, how come I see other people dealing, you know, getting to do things? How come I see God breaking through in this area for someone but not me? In many cases, it's because whatever it is that God has for you, you haven't invested enough. You haven't sat under the truth long enough. And the moment, because see, when you stay submerged into that, that incubator of truth, it's filling your mind until the picture is developed. Once that picture the heavenly picture is developed, that truth. Once it hits your mind, now you possess the capital, the faith, to walk over here to God and say, God, I got it now. And God's going to say, now he's going to tell you exactly what to do with that truth. You're moving it. But see, most people, they just get a little excited at church, and then you don't see them for three weeks. But then when life hits and things start falling apart again, they come on back. And the issue is, listen, when you get a glimpse of a vision, when you get a glimpse of truth, Real truth, original life prior to all this uh, other stuff, that these distractions and upbringings we all had. You sit under that long enough, that becomes so real to you that eventually you can transfer that over into an intention or a vision and an activity that will cause it to happen. I'm telling you now, the only thing you are missing between what you want to happen and what you are seeing happen is you just have not invested enough. And so for those of you in here that... Somebody has ever told you it don't take all of that. It don't require all of that you're doing for God. It don't require all that praying and Bible reading and studying and listening to the teaching over and over and taking notes. It don't require all that time at the church. It don't require. Listen, they don't understand the investment principle. See, God told me this investment principle. And you know what? The, the, the way it has worked for me over my lifetime has basically been I sit under the truth and I let God pour it into me until it's clear to me. Right? And I still, I'm investing, I'm getting the investment from God. Then I'm turning around and investing it into his vision. Whatever he told me it was supposed to be or the intention for my life. But it don't happen on the first investment. I got to keep taking it from the truth and keep investing until one day it matures. And when it matures, it pays dividends. See, this is what people don't understand. It doesn't pay you the first time you do it usually. But if it's something big and it's something important, I'm telling you, it's going to take you sitting with that investment for a long period of time. And then when you least expect it, I can't even tell you. I wish I could tell you, as a matter of fact. I got a call a couple of days ago. Um, it blew my mind. I mean, it literally, the timing of it, the person that was on the other end of the call, and I was thinking... You know, the, it, it, it hit me, this principle hit me. Why, why would this happen for me right now? And God said, because you have been faithful long enough and you made the investment necessary. And now it is simply time for that to pay off. Woo, somebody better shout up in this place. If you've been investing a long time and you ain't seen nothing, I am telling you, there comes a point. When you have accumulated enough investment, you have said, Lord, I'm not believing the lies of the world anymore. I believe I have the power, and with you all things are possible. Now I'm finally understanding what your kingdom is. I'm starting to grasp that, 
And now because I'm believing and seeking it, I'm putting so much investment into this future, I ain't seen nothing yet. And then all of a sudden, I got a phone call, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to tell you something. There are no skipping levels in the kingdom. There's no skip. It comes in states of maturity. And if you want to do something that God has planned for you, I promise you, he is going to make you invest until it has been uh, funded fully. And once that thing is funded fully, it will happen. Man. This right here is probably one of the most practical ones of, of all the teachings that we have talked about. Let me keep going. So, so in other words, okay, so the world is not just attacking us. We've been investing it into it, right? So we took the lies and invested into their, their false concepts of what could be. And the ideas that they give us are actually the reason those things happen to us. So isn't it amazing how when they come up with a new idea, everybody takes it and runs. And then if the idea loses traction, it seems like the problem goes away, right? Isn't that, isn't that weird? That's not weird. It's because first they grabbed your attention. They dumped a bunch of truth, false truth, into your head. We made it happen because we invested it into visions and intentions and activities. But now we can reverse all of that by getting our information directly from the gospel, from the kingdom of, of heaven. Amen. All right. So we know how to make things change. Make things change. Okay. So you're going to invest. You're going to seek. And get the truth, then you're going to invest that truth into the vision. So keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, and the doors will be open. The answers will come, and whatever you seek, it will happen. All right. So now I want to tell you really quickly, one of, one of the um, most critical components with my last few minutes right here, one of the most critical components of this truth capital situation, okay? Everything changes. So, so now we know we need truth, right? We know, okay, I, whatever it is, uh, wh wherever truth is, I need, I need to know where it is so I can go get it. Whatever it is, I need to know where it is. So let me put on the screen really quick, um, Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, 2 through 3, and I want to show you something. This says, all right, so now we're talking about um, getting invested in God, investing in us in the truth. And this basically says that. It says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Woo! Just if I, man, if I could, hopefully that just hits you like a ton of bricks, right? Put your mind in a place where the truth is going to be put into it. And that place is not the earth. Somebody should have just tossed your baby or your handkerchief to your neighbor. Did you... It's not on the earth. I, I keep pounding that because people still think that the seen realm or earth is what's running the show. It is not. God said, don't even put your mind on the things that you see. All right. Uh, next verse. Verse 3. For you died. Now, this is talking about your, your born-again experience. You died. Died means you left earth. You see how to go back to verse 2? I'm showing you the context. I'm showing you how to read this. Look. Set your mind on things above, not on the earth. Why? Because you died to the earth. In other words, the material world or the earth or their governments, their, their ideas, right? You died to that. You're no longer under the control of it. You died to the natural things of life. You, in other words, it has no dominion over you anymore. The earth does not control man. Man has dominion over the earth and everything in it and all the systems and everything. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your mind on things above in heaven or on seeing things the way, the way heaven sees them, not the way the earth sees them. Don't see it from a lower perspective. Don't, don't pick up their information as truth and their perception. Don't let their theories get mixed with your ideas and how to do things and how, and how humanity is vulnerable and subjected to different things. Because you died or you disappeared from their, from their uh, grip. You're no longer reachable. They can't control you anymore. They have no more dominion over you anymore. And then you are absorbed into Christ, meaning God has taken you into his kingdom and now given you his office, his power, his authority. And now Christ, because you are in Christ, 
Man, this is, this is what's powerful. Look at this. Because your life is hidden with Christ in God. So God is now uncovering the hidden realities of, now remember, Christ is not for, if y'all remember how we taught this, Christ means the presence or the rule of God on the earth, the kingdom presently on earth. So when he says your life is hidden with Christ in God, he's saying your real reality, who you are, what you are, is actually hidden in the presence of God as it is meant to be governed in the earth. So you have lost connection with the, with the man's idea of earth, and now you, are, you have been uh, revealed or uncovered in God's truth. This is what's powerful about this. So you have to start to see yourself and see things from this point of view. Now watch this. Hopefully you got that so far. Okay, so now Christ, because you are in Christ, guess what happens? Okay, you move into this new country or this new condition. It starts, uh, let me see if I can say that. It starts appearing to you. It starts appearing to you. It starts to become, to become evident to you. Because when it, let me see if I, let me go over here real quick. Colossians 3. I want to show you this. I don't think I gave them the verse, so let me just read it. So, you died, your life is hidden with Christ and God. Verse 4 says, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. Oh, my goodness. When Christ, who is our life, appears. Okay, so think about what I just said before. I go into this place where the presence of God or the kingdom of God is ruling on the earth. I go into that. And as I'm just like moving into a new country, because I am in it, different things become apparent to me that I didn't know when I was a visitor. You know, you start to see things. So Christ begins to appear to you. And then when he starts to appear to you, who you are starts to appear to you. Oh, my goodness. See, when you start getting a glimpse of who he is. You are actually getting a glimpse of your own life. That's what this verse is telling you. Your life is hidden in Christ. Now that you're in there, you're getting a glimpse of your life. You're getting a glimpse of what it would be like to live and move in heaven, but doing it in the other uh, heaven, which is the earth. Amen. So heaven on the earth. Now you get to do that right here. Jesus said, that's how I want you to see it. I want you to know if you move into this place mentally where you're seeing the truth, Man, if you start picking up on the truth, it is going to not change. It's not just seeing how who God is changes who you are right there. Man, oh, man. Somebody say increase power, increase power. All by just changing where you are putting your mind and your focus. Now, what we got to understand with my last five minutes here, this is what we have to understand, okay? The way we can ultimately affect the outcomes and the events of our lives is to change our seat just like being in this room right here right now right if you guys over here change your seat to right here in the front I, you know I almost made this a, an illustration but I didn't know uh, how this would go over I was going to get everybody to get up and change seats and then everybody would see what the other person could see but anyway I won't do that today but if you can move seats, it would instantly change your perspective. Changing your seat changes your perspective. But changing your perspective changes what you get invested into you. See, for example, if you fly on an airplane and you're, and you're you know, for years I just flew coach. That's a different, if you fly overseas in coach, it's a different meal. Different investment, they give you a different meal, right? A different experience. But if you fly first class overseas and you go up to a different seat, the seat determines what they invest into you. So in the kingdom, it's the same thing. If you change seats, if you keep maturing and changing seats, if you keep seeking God like that, if you stay in the presence of God, he's going to keep changing your seat. He's going to keep moving you to a place where he can give you more and invest more and invest more. And the better the investment, the more power you have. And you got it all by just shifting and changing where you sit. The seat, as we are calling it, is the legal position but the maturity level. And I don't think people really, really um, understand this because if they did, 
they would do everything they could to seek God's kingdom as their reality more than the earth. They would, do, they would set their minds on things above. They would change their seat because your, your kingdom IQ needs to change. And it can only change when you move seats. And when you move seats, it will change. So God gives you both in one package. He takes you right out of just by the work of Christ. He takes you and sits you in heavenly places. But that's not where the change is. That's just the change of the position. The change is when you start receiving the information that, go, that comes with that seat. And then you take that information and invest it into his work that he gave you, the vision. I just gave you the whole strategy right there. I just gave you the whole strategy. Let me finish with, with a few more thoughts on this. So your kingdom IQ, you're in, uh, an IQ is, is, is um, what the world calls, uh, I think it means something like intelligence quotient. IQ, we, you know, like people judge, they, they measure your IQ. But what is it? It's a test that they give to measure your IQ. It's a test that they give to measure a person's ability to use information and logic to answer questions and make predictions. It's your ability. Listen to what I said. Your kingdom IQ needs to change. So if you, is your kingdom IQ set on things above? How much do you know about the spiritual realm? How much do you know about how kingdoms function? Well, I can tell you most churches don't know anything. You know how I know? That's why I travel so much. It's because in a lot of cases, they want me to come and, and bring some of that information there. Or maybe sometimes for the first time. Why? Because our kingdom intelligence, our kingdom IQ, we don't have the, in, the intelligence of how that system runs. We have the earthly one. And so because we have the earthly one, remember how they measure IQ. It's a person's ability to use information and logic to answer questions and make predictions. So think about what IQ do you think the world is using to make predictions and answer questions? Which IQ? They measure your IQ to see your ability to take information, to make predictions and answer questions. Now, you can look around at the world and, and readily see that we have not answered very many questions right, have we? So, so do we need to increase our earthly intelligence and IQ or do we just need to get a different, like a different level of information? God said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you let me change your seat, I got a seat for you in my kingdom. It, will you let me, I, if you let me change your seat, I will increase your intelligence of how my system runs. It'll be so, it'll be so life-changing if you just give, if you will commit yourself to this, I'll put you in this seat, this office, this authority. And as I increase your kingdom IQ, your power to invest and your, your truth capital that I'll give you to invest into these visions will cause these things to change in ways that you never, you will get phone calls that you didn't know. You're like, how did I get this phone call? How did I get this opportunity? How did I get, because people don't understand. We spend a lot of time trying to know what the world knows. We don't spend very much time with God to know what he knows and to know him and to know our, who we are in him. So changing the seat, let me, let me just, um, let's see, I got like, I'm going to take like two more minutes. Give me two more minutes, okay? Two more minutes. So most people's earthly IQ is even if you think about the IQ situation, most people's earthly IQ is not great. <laughs> I mean, if you just talk about basic IQ, right? I know you've met some folk like that. You're like, this cannot be <laughs> the information. Do you guys are not? I don't know what it is. Some people you can just tell they're not thinking on a, on on the right level. But that's just basic basic IQ. So you know the kingdom IQ is much lower even. But hey, I will tell you this. This is what's funny. If your earthly IQ is not all that great, but your kingdom IQ is very high, you will overcome earthly situations without even knowing what they know. You can make a, you can make a difference from God's information into the earth. I know people that have gotten hold, a hold of the kingdom message and became multimillionaires and can't even read. Now you tell me if it's necessary. If you know what God tells you, to know, and he gives you his information, you may not be able to pass their test the way they tell you to pass it. But that shouldn't make you lose heart. What should make us all refocus is, if do we know what God knows, and do we think like God thinks? Or are we still thinking 
on a very low level of life. Last scripture, and then I'll let us get out of here. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 11 and 12. Okay, so we're, 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 we're probably going to finish this next week, and I will be here in the flesh, hallelujah, instead of on the screen. But I hope you've enjoyed this message on the screen. I hope that it's been just as good, if not better. Um, but let me read this to you, and then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go, okay? 1 Corinthians 13. All right, when I was a child, perspective right here. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. What's IQ, right? I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. My goodness. Let me see how many verses I want to do. Let's do one more. Verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, increase my IQ. Just as I am known. Guys, hallelujah. This is the difference maker right here. See, right now, if I'm viewing things as a child, what, what he's discussing in this particular instance, this is not when I on earth, I, I don't know, but then one day I'll see Jesus face to face. I can only imagine when I see Jesus face to face and all of that stuff. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, look, the one guy said, he said, when are you going to show us the Father? He said, if you've seen me, you have seen God. Seeing God face to face, seeing uh, things face to face doesn't mean you have to go to heaven. Because the kingdom of God is present on the earth today. He says, right now we just don't understand. We see it like we're looking into a mirror, but it's dim. Meaning the revelation is just not clear. He said, but if we keep pursuing it and put away childish things and mature. If we mature in things of God, if you mature in understanding how his country functions, if you mature in pursuing in your daily activities of putting him first and putting uh, uh, other things aside and prioritizing what God has told you to prioritize, if you get with the truth and stay in the truth, and see, he said what's going to happen is your perception is going to change. And you know how kids are. Listen, the, the, the idea of this changing seat idea, Think about this. A child is a, is a particular position in life. But isn't, isn't this true? When you are a child, dating, sports, TV, video games, comic books, all these things are at the top of the list. When I was in middle school, these things were at the top of the list. You know what I mean? When you're a little kid, it's, it's at the top of the list. But if you value these things as an adult over the pursuit of your potential, over the pursuit of your purpose, over the, the, pursuit, of, um, the, over the pursuit of your purpose on the earth and the impact you were born to make. I know some people play video games so long, they don't even know what day it is. I mean, grown people. Grown people, and you look up, you done play Madden so long. That you don't even say, how long have I been here? It's been six hours later. I, did, I used to do that too when I was in the sixth grade. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't keep doing that as an adult. You got to get up, go do stuff. You know? You can't sit there all day doing stuff like that. Why? Because at some point, it's, it's fun to do recreational probably. Okay, I've heard. But if you do that all day long, you got, you got the world turned upside down. Positionally, you're pursuing the wrong things. Because when you are in a different frame of mind, it's okay to have fun with those things. It's okay to enjoy some of those things. But, guys, when you shift out of that mentality, you get to a bigger calling, a bigger purpose, and the position you are in, the seat that you're in, changes the view. Hear me what I'm saying. When you get to a different seat or a different level of maturity in life, the priority list just changes. And this is where I'm going to close. And I'm not bashing people who love video games and stuff. What I'm saying is, is that you know like I know. There's, there's a mentality of people that even sometimes they grow in age, they don't actually change positions mentally. They don't ever grow out of the priorities that they had before. What is the difference? You never switched seats. You never got into a different place of authority and understanding of who uh, God is and who you are in him. You got to change. Once, what is God trying to do? God is trying to give you more power, and he can't give you more power until you move to a different perspective, until you move to where he wants you to be. There will still be plenty of fun to be had. 
There will still be a lot of advent, but I promise you, you're giving up things in life by not allowing God to raise you up to a different level that you would never experience before. I hope this has helped you in some way today. I hope that you are starting to see. I got to invest. I have to put more investment, not in those, those other priorities that you might maybe used to have. When you start investing into time with God and into the things he cares about, you are going to possess the power to invest that capital into God-like visions, God-sized visions. I'm going to get more, I'm going to get further into this idea next week, but hopefully you're grasping what I'm saying. God has seated you in heavenly places with heavenly purposes and heavenly um, design, and he has given you so much potential that you have no idea. Let me pray for you today. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much that you have seated us in heavenly places. God, now we want to have our minds not on the things of the earth, not on this lower elementary uh, level of life, but God, we want to start to see that strategy. God, we are seated with you. We want our mind to be in heavenly places. Pour into us today, Lord. Pour into our people uh, on this earth, Lord. Pour into your people on this earth, Lord. And God, as, we, as you invest and we seek you and you invest that, that new information, that new opportunity, those divine levels and positions, Lord, may we take that power and no longer invest it into the world. May we take that power and invest it into things that bring transformation and bring your kingdom to appear on earth just as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name mighty name shout amen amen and amen guys you are a you are an important part of what god is doing on the earth so make sure you invest into godly things this week amen and you are going to see change happen just keep investing it will change in jesus name shout amen amen i'll see you next week god bless you.